So we were all kind of amazed that we'd never had any vermin, um, given how totally disgusting this apartment that we lived in was. It was my first student apartment. It was the late 90s, and there were six of us living in a three-bedroom place. Uh, and it was just horrible, just like peeling wallpaper and moldy orange carpets. We had this tiny little kitchen that somehow housed enough crockery and cutlery that you could get away with not doing the washing up for three days, which is like six people, three meals a day. You basically got like 54 meals worth of washing up in a big pile. It was so gross. But we got to the end of the school year and there was no mice and no rats. Uh, and it was kind of that magical time where, if you've ever lived in like a, a town that has a lot of um, university students, there's this point right at the end of the school year, the beginning of the summer, where most of them have gone home, and there's just like a handful of you left who are working for the summer, and it feels a bit like you own the city. <laughs> so there was only two of us left in the apartment, me and Claire, the night before, the last of our other roommates, uh, Annabelle, had moved out, and she was lucky because her parents basically move stuff professionally. Like their job is that they import goods from Indonesia, I think like furniture and gifts, uh, and then sell them. And so they came to move her out and brought like all their massive big crates that they use for that. Uh, and Claire and I just had like crappy cardboard boxes that were like damp and falling apart that we'd got from the store downstairs. And we were kind of in the middle of packing. It was just total chaos everywhere. And it got to 11 o'clock and I was like, dude, we just need to stop for the night and start again tomorrow. So, because uh, most of the other people weren't around, we were like, well, let's just watch TV. So we sat down to watch, and it was like actual TV, because this is before anyone had a computer at home. Um, so we're watching TV and then Claire turns to me and she says, and she uses this voice, which is like, you know when people use a voice and it's like a calm voice? But it's actually that they're so frightened that they've gone like right through fear, all the way back to being calm again. And she said, Marsha, there's a snake on the floor. <laughs> and one thing about Claire is she is like the most relaxed, easygoing, unruffleable person I know except for the fact that she has a crazy snake phobia. So I was like, oh, all right. Looked at her and looked down at the floor and saw this snake disappearing under the couch. Um, and I don't know if they have snakes in Edinburgh, but if they do, I imagine that they're like little, like, you know, garter snake type snakes. But this was like about two fingers wide, black with yellow stripes. Uh, and so... We did what any self-respecting 19-year-old feminists would do and stood up on high bits of furniture going, snake, snake, where the fuck is snake? <laughs> and then we called all the boys we knew. <laughs> and, uh, and none of them were in because it was the holidays and they'd all gone home and this is before <laughs> cell phones. So we didn't have their like family's numbers. And, uh, and we knew our neighbours well enough to know that none of them had a snake. And so um, we called the RSPCA, which is, I think you guys call it like the OSPCA. It's basically the Royal Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals, the people that you call if you see a wild animal. And they said, yeah, we don't do snakes. <laughs> because we're not allowed to kill them and they might harm our staff and we can't risk that. But there's probably snake babies under the floorboards, so you should check. <laughs> and we were like, but what do we do? And they said, um, call an exterminator, call pest control. So we went and got the yellow pages. And by this point, it's like half past midnight. We're calling people's landlines. No one is answering their phone. Finally, we get through and like, this guy answers the phone, I'm like, hello. And I'm like, hi, is that Stevie's pest control? And he's like, hi, this is Stevie. And I say, hi, would you be able to come over now? We live on East Preston Street. It's just near the meadows. The meadows is this like big expanse of grass right in the middle of Toronto. And he's like, hi, what's the problem? And I'm like, we've got a snake. And he says, I do need to do snakes. And hangs on the phone. <laughs> 
So we start calling others and they're all either not answering or they didn't do snakes either. And we're getting more and more panicked. And then eventually we get through to this guy and um, Claire's on the phone to him and, and he's like, yeah, I'll come over. She explains it's a snake. He's okay with that. Uh, and then she's like, uh, Marsh, can you describe the snake to me? And by this point, she's like stood on the couch and I'm stood on the coffee table on the other side of the room and I'm looking down at this snake um, and it's like, I don't know, about a foot and a half long and it, it rears up. But it's like far enough away from me that I'm okay. And I'm generally, I'm not very squeamish. You know, when I was a kid, I was always the one that would like pick up the slugs. And, uh, and so I'm like, well, it's like, I don't know, a couple of fingers wide, about a foot and a half long. It's kind of black with these yellow stripes. And she's like, okay, what's the head like? Is it flat? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's flat. And it's got like a black diamond on the top. And she's like, okay, okay, Marsha, come here. Marsha, come here. Marsha, come here. So I come and she hangs up the phone and takes me outside gets a towel and puts it down at the gap at the bottom of the door. And in that same very calm voice, she says, so he just told me that it's a crite from Indonesia and it's poisonous and it could kill us with one bite. <laughs> so he also told us it's gonna cost 75 pounds which is kind of, in Canadian, that's about, the, like if you account for like uh, the exchange rate and the inflation rate and the fact that we were students who had no money, that's like $25,000. <laughs> but luckily Claire was about to go, because that's her real name, because I have her permission to tell this story. Um, Claire was about to go travelling, so um, she had a bunch of money in her account and I for some reason was given like an insane overdraft my, by my bank, so I gave her both our ATM cards and she went out for like the longest 15 minutes of my entire life while I just sat staring at the bottom of the door to see if the towel moved. Um, and then she comes back with the money and then the guy turns up. And uh, he's kind of very tall, quite good-humoured English guy, and he's like, so snake then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Lifts up the towel and walks into the room. We're both behind him, and he pulls out of his bag one of those things that's like a, you know those things that you, like, pick up litter with? Like, it has a handle at one end and, like, a pincer thing at the other end. And, um... So he has the pincer thing, and we're like, we last saw it over there under the couch. So he goes and starts like hitting the couch and moving the couch. And then the snake comes out and he picks it up with the thing, and it bites the side of the table with its fangs. <laughs> and Claire swears she saw little jets of poison come out. <laughs> and he's like pinning it to the table, and he says, do you have a knife? And we're like, we packed the knives. <laughs> and we don't know where they are. And he said, well, do you have a hammer? <laughs> and I was like, I've got a candlestick. <laughs> and it was kind of square, so he went, that'll do. So he got it. And he lifted it up above his head. <laughs> and then Claire and I both went, no! <laughs> because, you know, we're vegetarians. <laughs> And he kind of looked at us like, seriously? And we were like, oh yeah, the snake's life or our lives. And we picked our lives. And so he got the candlestick and was like, wham, wham. And it was dead. So he let go of it and um, we all took a moment. And then the snake started slithering across the table. And he grabbed it again and was like, wham, wham. And it hit it so many times that it was basically flat completely in the middle and there was no question of it coming back to life and he picked it up with the litter picker up and he had this kind of knapsack that was made out of like a heavy duty plastic and he lifted up the flat and popped the snake inside and went that will come in handy <laughs> I have, a, I have a client recently who didn't pay me. I'm going to pop it through their letterbox. <laughs> and we paid him. And at this point, the phone rings. 
suddenly and it was three o'clock in the morning and, and it's our friend Dan and he's like oh my god I just got your message are you okay and we're like we're fine but can we come and stay at your house please we don't want to stay in the snake house <laughs> there might be babies under the floorboards <laughs> and he's like yeah but I have to leave at eight o'clock in the morning and I have to lock the door behind me and I'm I'm like going back home so I'm gonna have to kick you out then and we're like that's fine <laughs> So we take our bedding and walk through the Edinburgh streets at three in the morning and go to, go to his house and sleep. And then in the morning he wakes us up and kicks us out and we're so tired. And we're walking down the street, each of us is like wrapped in a duvet, like the two saddest little sheep. <laughs> and Claire says, I don't want to go back to the flat. And I'm like, I don't want to go back either. And she says, should we just go to the meadows and have a little sleep? <laughs> So we go and we find a spot and she puts down her duvet and then I put my duvet down on top and then we crawl in between and we curl up and we go to sleep. Thank you. <laughs>